Hey guys, Kakarot197 again with another question of the week. Now, I don't think anyone is going to blame me um, when I tell you that I'm taking a little bit of a break from covering all of the model numbers and instead I decided to tackle some more normal questions that I found very interesting. And the one that I'm going to be tackling in this episode is Dennis's question. I saw this interesting question on Twitter. What if the mobile suit that didn't get stolen by Zaft wasn't a strike, but one of the other Gundams instead? Okay, so the setup for this question would be very simple. For each of the four situations, the Strike Gundam would simply switch places with the other G weapon that then, in that scenario, would be Kira's Gundam. This then means that for simplicity's sake, the Strike would be piloted by the original pilot of the machine Kira gets his hands on. So, the first thing to tackle then is something that would happen for all four of the situations. Zaft gets their hands on the Strike Gundam. But unlike what you might be expecting, this could actually be a worse situation for Zaft. Because let's not forget how the Strike was when it first launched. It only had the built-in weaponry being the um, Eaglestellung guns and the two Armor Schneiders. Or, in Kira's words... <laughs> The Zaft boys needed to get their hands on the Gundam, so I think it's highly likely that either A, they wouldn't know to go look for the Striker packs because they simply assumed that, well, that's it, this is the Strike Gundam, it's still under construction, and the weapons this thing has simply aren't done yet. Or B, they simply don't have the time to go look for the striker packs and they would much rather just bail out with those machines they already have and make sure they get those to base. This would then give Orb and the Alliance the time to go ahead and destroy the striker packs to prevent them from falling into Zaft's hands. Also, I'm going with the assumption that the Strike Gundam only contains enough information to dock with the striker packs and that it doesn't contain their full information as a precaution for should it get stolen. So I don't think Zaf would get their hands on striker packs anytime soon, nor would they immediately be able to produce their own ones, which would be a possibility, but only until much later. And talking about developing mechs, today's video is brought to you by Final Gear, the mech-style strategy RPG set in an apocalyptic world where you can collect over 100 gorgeous waifu pilots and thousands of mechs to customize, all of which fall into different specialities like shooters, defenders, snipers, etc. So you can fine-tune your team to your liking. Remember, Thick thighs save lives, so that's why I recommend having Solvay as your first line of defense in this side-scrolling shooting game with real-time tactical maps. As you play, you'll strategically upgrade your base to win the battles. So if you want to unlock tons of characters and mechs, play through a fascinating storyline, experience mech-related elements, and enjoy the fun shooting style, then Final Gear is the game for you. And right now, they've got the limited time special summer memories event going on, where you not only have higher chances to recruit SSR pilots, but you can also get your hands on limited time swimsuit pilot skins. So suit up with my gift code Kakarot197, and not only will you receive 5 system upgrades, 5 piloting theories intermediate, and 10,000 gold, but you will also be supporting the channel. Okay, so Kira not getting the Strike Gundam and Zaf then not immediately having the resources or the time to make Striker packs would have a significant impact on future mobile suit development. Because well, I think it's safe to assume that Kira and the Strike Gundam really showed the world just how powerful and versatile the Striker packs were. But in our new scenarios, at least the ones where he survives, he's going to show the world the power of something else. And the best example I can give for this is the Blitz Gundam. If Kira had gotten the Blitz Gundam, I think Gundam Seed would have turned out way different. 
First of all, the battle with Miguel. This is something that does not just go for the Blitz Gundam, but for all of the other Gundams as well. Kieran now has access to beam rifles and beam sabers, so I don't think Miguel would really get a second chance in any situation. So, good job, Kira. You're saving Sunrise on celebrity voice acting costs. Um, as far as driving off Le Creuset goes, I think that would more or less be the same, except in the case of the Blitz Gundam, it might have taken a bit longer because he didn't have access to the Agni, and he would have had to do it with other beam rifles, but we'll just say that he still manages to hit Le Creuset, and Le Creuset is again quite surprised that they managed to pack quite a powerful punch into just a normal sized weapon. And now it all depends on how smart the folks on the Archangel were, or maybe more specifically, how smart they would be about using the Mirage Colloid. I think it's a fair assumption to make that Zaft would have had no idea about the Mirage Colloid that could turn the Blitz invisible to both the naked eye and to sensors. So if I were them, I would keep that as my ace in the hole. In the next battle, Kira is going to be facing off against a couple of Jins and the Aegis. Now, this I think would have turned out one of three ways. Either they told Kira not to use a Mirage Colloid and simply rely on its phase shift armor, because the reasoning would then be the threat isn't high enough yet, so we're gonna keep that Mirage Colloid, as I said, as our ace in the hole. Or on the other hand, they might have thought that because it was just the Aegis and a couple of Jins, that this would have been the perfect opportunity to take out the Aegis. So they ordered Kira to sortie with the Mirage Colloid active and to snipe the Aegis before it ever realized what was going on. Kira would then either obey the orders because he convinced himself that it was impossible that Atherin was in that machine, and well, because he shot him before he would have known what the hell was going on, uh, that would have been the end of it. Or he does not go along with that plan because he thinks Atherin is in that Gundam, which would then be option three, and things kind of play out as they do in the anime. But whichever option here is chosen, I think that even when Zaft learns about the Mirage Colloid, I think Kira is going to be able to shoot down more of the Gundams because of it, which would then have an enormous butterfly effect later on in the series. Here are a few of the highlights. Admiral Halberton, the dude who spearheaded the G-Project, would still be alive, along with his 8th fleet, which would then mean that the Archangel received way better treatment than they did in the series later on, and this probably would have prevented them from deserting. Something which then would have put Orb in a way tighter spot. Also, the folks on the Archangel never would have gotten in contact with Kigali and friends because they wouldn't have made that disastrous re-entry that forced them to land in the middle of zaf controlled territory. As for the Alliance's main machine then, it probably would have been something like the N-Dagger N, but then without the nuclear reactor, and because this is going to be the mass production machine, probably also without the Mirage Colloid, and I guess it would now then be called the Blitz Dagger. Now of course, we must also have a Blitz variant with Mirage Colloid for the Special Operations Forces, and this would then be this universe's equivalent of the 105 dagger, so um, the 207 dagger in our story. On Zaft's side then, they would now not have access to Mirage Colloid, which was used to hide Genesis, which I believe did play a role in the surprise effect that that thing had the first time around. So in this version of the anime, the Earth Alliance would have been significantly stronger. However, Zaft would have also been way stronger, because with everything that's going on, Lagus now wouldn't have stolen the freedom for Kira, who is still with the Earth Alliance, presumably, which then means that Atherin and the Justice wouldn't have gone after him, and they also wouldn't have deserted. The clear loser then in this situation is Orb. This probably would have been one hell of a climactic final battle then, because it would have seen the Earth Lines at maximum power and Zaft at maximum power going head-to-head -head with each other, and they 
the nukes would probably be raining down. Then for a more anticlimactic ending, we go with the Buster Gundam. As much as I like the Buster as a Gundam, it is a long range support mobile suit. So I'm afraid that Kira Bias Lonesome, even with the support of the Mobius Zero and the Archangel, would get quickly overwhelmed in the battles where they had to face off against the other four Gundams. He would either get captured or killed. The obvious end result for either of these situations then is both the Archangel and the Mobius Zero being destroyed and the Earth Alliance losing out on a lot of data. The only silver lining I can see here for the Earth Alliance is for the Eurasian Federation, whose Hyperion series could now become the main machine, which is, well, a unit that definitely deserves more love. And now on to one of my favorite scenarios. What if Kira got the Aegis and Atherin got the Strike? Now, since the Aegis in a way combines all three Striker packs, I think the main course of events would have been relatively the same, with the big difference being the mass production unit that the Earth Alliance would end up using. Instead of the Strike Dagger, it would now be the Aegis Dagger, a unit that I believe would have been much more useful for the Earth Alliance. Now, get this. The big problem for the Earth Alliance and their natural pilots is that they could not pilot mobile suits. However, they could pilot mobile armors. So if you're going to be making a mobile suit for your pilots who are having a hard time with mobile suits, why not give it a mobile suit that could also become a mobile armor and is therefore significantly easier to pilot in at least one of its two modes. They could have lowered the power of the Scylla main cannon, added some Vulcans for mobile armor mode, uh, stripped away the uh, phase shift armor like they did with the strike dagger, and voila, the perfect mass production unit for the Alliance in space. Then for on Earth, they could have tried to make one that could fly for extended periods of time. And what could be a better non-transformable partner mobile suit for this transformable mobile suit than the Hyperion series? Oh, and what about Atherin and his mostly weaponless strike? Well, he's not just going to keep using it as is. At first, he would probably be using the Jin weapons that were lying around, like a heavy assault machine gun or a bazooka, but then he would probably get an assault shroud upgrade similar to what they did with the duel, and maybe even a reverse engineered dual beam rifle. So the strike Gundam is going to be in the fight. Which then makes me wonder, in their final, well, final climactic battle with their original Gundams, would now Kira be the one to blow himself up? Anyways, finally we then have Kira getting the dual Gundam, and I think it's fair to say that probably the least would change here. Uh, sure, Kira would lose access to the Striker packs, which could prove disastrous in that one battle where Atherin tried to uh, steal him, acquire him, however you want to call that, and a striker pack change was a thing that saved him, but the butterfly effect could then have prevented that situation from happening in the first place, because at that point, Izak would still be piloting the underpowered strike without the striker packs, because even if we were to upgrade the striker pack with the assault shroud down the line, at this point in the series, there is no talk of the Assault Trout yet. The big difference then would be that the Earth Alliance would now be using the Dual Dagger as their main machine rather than the Strike Dagger and Variants. So whichever Gundam Kira gets his hands on, it would definitely be interesting to see how mobile suit development would be affected in the long run. Because now the Earth Alliance no longer had a Striker Pack compatible mobile suit, and especially in the case of the Blitz and the Aegis, they now had another golden feature that they could focus on for future mobile suits. And for Zaf then, even though they were the ones who now had the machine with the Striker Pack compatibility, it is highly likely that because they couldn't get their hands on the striker packs that they would have just kind of used it like they used the dual Gundam. And 
Also, another thing to add to this is that depending on the situation at the end of the war, they could be in a position of power. What I mean by this is that one of the reasons for the construction of the Impulse Gundam and the Wizard Packs was that at the end of the First Bloody Valentine War, they signed an armistice where they stipulated how much mobile suits each side could have. And for Zaft, this clearly meant limiting their military power, so instead of having many mobile suits that could do many different things each, they went with one main mobile suit, the Zok Warrior, and for the Gundam, the Impulse Gundam, which could then use many different packs for different um, operations or like different uh, tasks on the battlefield, which would then circumvent those limitations of the armistice. We only have one mobile suit, but we have, to exaggerate, 10 different packs to make it do different things. However, with these new scenarios, Zaft could have been way closer to winning, meaning they were in more of a position of power, meaning that they then could have pushed for having as big of an army as they wanted. However, as always with these what-if scenarios, it is impossible to tell exactly what would happen due to the butterfly effect. So that's where I'm going to end this video. But let me know down below which one is your favorite scenario and how you think it would play out. And of course, if you have any questions you would like me to answer in a future video, leave those down below as well. A big thanks to Final Gear for sponsoring this video, links to the game down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.